It's time to earn some more Caspa. Let's overclock my KS0 Pro. What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, in today's video, we're going to go over exactly what you need to overclock your KS0 Pro, as well as a step-by-step -step guide on how anybody can do it. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so let's take a look at the KS0 Pro and from Ice River directly with their stock firmware, it is set up and advertised to do 200 giga hash at about 100 watts. I got one of these not too long ago directly from Ice River and the advertised specifications are exactly what we saw in my video. If you guys wanna see a full unboxing video and step-by-step -step guide on setting it up for beginners, I'll put a link directly down below to that. Now, one of the challenges with the KS0 Pros is that if we jump over to somewhere like asicmarketplace.com, they have them, but the prices have really gone up. And in addition to that, most of them take quite some time to ship. A lot of these are in batches. Taking a look over at Crypto Miner Bros as well, looking at their KS0 Pros. You know, there's a price for a quick delivery, or if you go ahead and bump it towards the end of December, they actually give you a cheaper price. But as all of you guys know, every day is lost profits that you're sitting around waiting for your Caspa Miner to be delivered. Looking at Coin Mining Central, they're the exact same situation. You actually can order and get your pricing based off of date. And then finally, Mineshop.eu. Taking a look at even working with them directly, they go ahead and they have a pre-order process in place. So nobody has these things in stock, which is absolutely crazy. So at this point, you're probably like, well, what is the hash rate? I'm not really sure. We're actually gonna find out tonight. There is like, five or six or seven different firmwares out there because every KS0 Pro is super finicky and delicate. So we're gonna test all the different firmwares today and see if we can get the most out of my KS0 Pro. But before we do, there's two pieces of hardware that you're gonna need to accomplish this. Now, the one that I'm using and that you'll see today that I've advertised in other videos is the AC Infinity Multi-Fan. This is a USB fan, you plug into the side of it and it has a little controller on it. Mine runs on high all the time. It goes for $13.99 and you're absolutely going to need it based off of the specifications from T-Swift for overclocking the KS0 Pro. The other thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need to upgrade your power supply. The actual required power that is necessary for the overclock is actually 180 watts. Well, the one that came with my KS0 Pro is a 120 watt power supply. And what they recommend is like 230 to 250 watts just to be safe. I'll leave a link not only to the AC Infinity fan, as but also I'll leave a link to this power adapter directly down below. Alrighty, so let's go over all the details about the KS0 Pro overclocking firmware and all of this can be found over on the t swift telegram group i'll leave a link directly down below to that so let's go ahead and dive in and i'll flash up some of the details as we go along here so this firmware it says we now have ice river ks0 pro 280 giga hash overclock firmware available for sale so two things there one it's 280 giga hash that's insane two it is for sale it costs 600 caspa per machine, they actually request your MAC address and then the firmware is actually locked to your MAC address. The advertising right now is about 280 giga hash at 155 watts is what they're saying here. But here's a big but, as I talked about, each of the KS0 Pros are very delicate and very finicky. So that being said, they give you like a number. I'll have to look and see once we get into it. It's like five or six or seven different firmwares to kind of, you know, find the one that works best for you. So I may get the 280 giga hash today, or I may get the 250 giga hash today based off of how things go. But either way, huge improvement for me. So as you can see here in the requirements, it says requirements, 180 watt power supply, higher quality PSU recommended. So I'll link that one as we talked about down below. External 120 millimeter fan, AC power fan, recommended instead of USB. So I'm not, I haven't had an issue with my USB fan, my AC infinity fan. So I'm going to continue using it, but they're recommending a direct one that plugs right into the wall. So pick your choice. I'll put links to both of those, the USB one I have or the AC one directly into the wall down below. AC infinity makes both 
models. They vary a little bit on CFM. This one that I'm using is about 104 CFM. I think the other one's about 140. So keep an eye out. Outside of that, this is not for the KS0. It's for the KS0 Pro. Uh, scrolling down here, it looks like it's just a bunch of, uh, there's more details in here that it talks about. I'm gonna leave it down below. Um, they are saying that they are refining. So they originally talked about 360 giga hash for the overclocking firmware. In here, they're saying that they're refining and doing more internal testing and that that one hopefully will be available in the near future, which is awesome. All right, so here is my Ice River KS0 Pro. And uh, this is the one that I got directly from Ice River as a sponsorship and promotion. Didn't cost me anything. Want to provide full transparency. It does not have that cool, fancy little white Ice River KS0 Pro sticker on it, unfortunately. That would have been really, really cool. I do have the AC Infinity. That's the multi-fan connected there. This thing's awesome. It's about 100 CFM and it wires off of there and goes USB directly into the Ice River. It has a little controller next to it, high, medium, and low. And look at that, you can even hook up another fan to it if you wanted to. It gives you a little USB splitter off of that. Something I thought about while I was getting set up is I do have a little uh, adapter here that most phones come with and stuff. So I will take the recommendation and I think about it since I already have this, I can unplug it from here, plug into here and go right into the wall. So that'll be really, really nice. This is completely stock. I haven't changed anything about it with the firmware since I've gotten it from Ice River directly. The power adapter is the stock one that I got directly from Ice River. It's the light on 120 watt. So let's go ahead. Oh, let's check the watts real quick. Watts over here, 98 watts on our watt meter. I know it's a little hard to see based off of that angle, but let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and we're gonna go ahead and dive in step-by-step step at getting this thing overclocked. All right, let's dive into it. So I've swapped out my 120 watt power supply for the 230 watt power supply. You can see right now in the software, it's only been up for about six minutes right now, but we're at 212 giga hash. So no real big change there. Now. Here is the folders and files that were provided to me uh, from T-Swift when I went ahead and got this from them. So as you guys can see, look at all these different firmwares in there, 260Gs and Ls and 270s and 280s and 280s. So we're gonna run through these um, because there's actually a set of instructions here, which is actually really nice. All right, let's zoom in on these instructions. So first thing we're gonna do is restore the monitor factory settings in the web interface or by pressing the, and holding the button on the outside of it, allow the miner to restart. So I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna press the button, I'm, because I have access to the web GUI, we're just gonna go ahead and reset it in the software. Next thing we're gonna do, upload the INIT, it's like the initialized file, into the firmware upgrade menu and restart again. Easy enough. That's actually right here in the software, this one, INIT. We're gonna start with that one. Step three, upload the firmware with your desired overclock settings, then restart again. It says apply your pool settings and set the fan speeds to 100% and observe hash rate. You can later, I guess later, decrease fan speeds until you notice hash rate decrease. If the hash rate does not meet your expectations, try using a different firmware version. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I messed up, I swapped there. Use the following sequence, 480G underscore L. Then if that doesn't get what we want, then jump to the next one, the next one, the next one. So like, we're gonna start out at the highest. And then if we, we're not hitting that, we're gonna lower it down slowly and slowly. It's kind of like, like, it's kind of like a GPU and overclock tuning. If the hash rate doesn't meet your expectations, try using a different firmware version. When using this firmware, make sure your power supply is 180 watts, check, we're good or greater. And the external fan is installed blowing air towards the heat sink. Interesting. So. I'm going to have to swap mine around because mine is blowing it away from the heat sink. Uh, unscrew and remove both of the side panels of the machine to ensure that airflow can pass through the internal parts of the machine. It is also recommended to have an additional fan or airflow pushing air through it. Man, I might as well go get my box fan out of the garage and throw it on this thing. That's crazy. Um, all right, let's jump over to the camera. I didn't read these ahead of time and let's go ahead and take these steps. All right, let me get you guys caught up. So I took this fan and we swapped it around. So instead of it 
pulling air away from it, which is kind of what I've done in the past with other the KS zeros and stuff like that, it's actually facing inward. So I don't feel any air right here at all. Then what we've done is we've removed these guys, which cover this plate here, and this one actually covers this plate here. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this is much better cooling than like the other, like I've done with my KS0 and stuff like that. This is actually a really good idea. And here's why I say that. We have fans pushing in here, and then we have the worth, worthless fans on the back still. We'll set them to 100. But if I put my hand here, I can feel the air coming out of the unit, even on this side here. It is a much better airflow design. If, throwing this out there, if we had this same design with this guy on the back side here, got rid of these shitty ass little fans here and blew in on this side, had like another one, that'd be sick. And then just, if this side was all mesh, you had a mesh setup, oh man, that would be perfect. All right, somebody get to work. My 3D printers, get to work, let's do it. So anyways, we are set up exactly how they have asked. The only thing I don't have is like an additional fan to sit by, uh, but we'll have to see if cooling is an issue. All right, we're ready. Back to the computer. All right, so step number one is we're going to factory reset it. So in the software here, we're gonna go into the bottom, go to restore factory settings, click on that, and we're gonna click okay. All right, step number two is we're going to upload the INIT file for the firmware. Uh, that was provided and then restart it again. So we're gonna go ahead and go to firmware upgrade. We're gonna select browse. We're going to select the folder that was sent to us. And then in here is our INIT. We're gonna select that one, open and update. And we're gonna give it a few minutes and we'll return back and move on to step number three. So let's jump on to our next step here. And that is going to be uploading the firmware we're going to start with the 280G underscore L and see how things go. So we're gonna do our firmware upgrades. We're gonna hit select file and 280G underscore L. We're gonna hit open and update and we'll check back in a few minutes. All right guys, it has been 15 minutes and I'm happy to say I only have to do this once and don't have to mess with the other firmware. I have not touched this thing since I made the upload for the 280, was it GL? We're currently at 285 giga hash and it's awesome. It has been running great, but let's go ahead over and take a look and look at a few things. Let's look at the Watts. What are we at the wall? And then let's also look at how the temperature is right now, because you know, we've kind of made quite a few changes to our unit. Let's see how it's holding up. All right, let's take a look at the wall. Now it's a little hard on the angle but I'll read it out, 143 watts. Very consistent at the wall there. Um, so you can feel the air coming out. It's not super hot either on each side, which is nice. Now, I wanted to show you guys ambient temperature, 100, or I'm sorry, 100, 76 Fahrenheit, 24 C for you foreigners. Um, but yeah, it's, it's doing pretty good. So let's feel our power supply. This is pretty warm but it's not terrible. Uh, if we go ahead, take a look. And yeah, what we got here, 106. Now, this, I've, I saw 120 on the KS0 Pro without this kind of fan swapped around, without these sides kind of taken off. Let's take a look at what this is now. 102, 97, let's check this side here. 104. Now something I'm curious on is inside here. You guys can kind of see inside. I'm just going to do a few here, just sporadic. 111, 108, 110. So nothing too, too crazy. Like I think I was expecting like hotter, like 140 or something like that. But this is, this is awesome. Now I don't kind of like having this open. So like my thoughts are is like, I love to see, you know, like my 3D printers out there, but you'd have to be able, something that can handle the heat really good is, you know what I could do? Instead of 3D print, what if we took this and we drilled a whole bunch of holes in it to kind of be like a mesh layer, a whole bunch of holes to make it like, to allow that airflow. It's still gonna restrict it. I mean, a mesh, a mesh layer that had like, you know what, my 3D printer guys, if you could take the top of this have it in there and then have this whole thing be a mesh. That would be sick for this side. And then same thing for this side would be really, really good. But 
Heck yeah, man, the Casio Pro 200, and what do we say? 85 giga hash on the T-Swift firmware. All right, guys, that is gonna wrap things up for today. I'll put links to everything I talked about down below. Uh, to the T-Swift Discord, if you wanna go over there and purchase this firmware, uh, to the adapter, the 230 watt adapter power supply, the uh, AC Infinity uh, multi, what do they call it, multi-fan. We'll have that down there below. Uh, yeah, feel free. I'd love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts? What are your feelings on this? I know some of you 3D printers out there, your minds are already turning here. I mean, at the end of the day, the enclosure for this unit is just not sufficient. And I think eventually we're gonna end up moving away from that enclosure, to be honest with you. But anyways, that's gonna wrap things up for today. If you guys wanna be notified on my next Casper video, go ahead and click that bell and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.